Hi, uh, my name is Dr. John Harry, and today we're going to be talking about the uh, the hepatitis C virus. You know, many healthcare professionals are they they recommend that their patients who who are baby boomers get tested for hepatitis C, and reason being is and and well, did you know that you know one in thirty baby boomers are infected with hepatitis C and they don't even know it. So back in 2012, the uh, the CDC amended testing recommendations to you know include one-time hepatitis C virus testing for all persons who were born between 1945 and 1965, regardless of any other risk uh, risk factors. So you know people in this age group, they're they're five times more likely than any other age group to have hepatitis to have the hepatitis C virus. Um, so let's let's talk about you know exactly what the uh, the Hep C virus is. So you know hepatitis C it's a uh, born, uh, born, uh, bloodborne uh, disease which was you know was only uh, discovered back in uh, 1989. Much of the affected population um, doesn't have symptoms and therefore they don't even know that they have it. Now. Hepatitis C affects the liver and can cause severe liver damage or cirrhosis. So hepatitis C, it's you know, it's typically it's going to be transmitted by recreational drug use involving needles. Uh, could you can also get it if you're the recipient of a, a blood transfusion, uh, sexual contact with a person who has the virus, and unsterilized needles or equipment in healthcare settings or uh, or tattoo needles. Now um, symptoms. Uh, that a person may have if they, uh, you know, for if they have the uh, if they're hep uh, chronic Hep C virus, include dark urine, fevers, fatigue. Uh, they get yellowing of the skin, uh, also known as jaundice. Uh, they can get joint pain. One of the main reasons that this age group is recommended to be screened for the Hep C virus is because effective screening procedures for uh, donated blood. They weren't instituted until um, until about 1992, so you know donated blood can you know, it can be life saving for individuals you know who have lost blood because of trauma or surgery, uh, as well as for people who have you know become severely anemic. So, you know, screening measures to protect both the donor and the recipient are important to prevent the transmission of any bloodborne disease, and another factor that you know contributes to the reasoning behind. Um, this age group being mostly affected by the virus in the past is because disposable syringes, they weren't introduced until between 1950 to 1960. Now, you know, medical procedures increased after World War II. And, you know, prior to 1950, injections were given in glass and metal syringes, which are sterilized manually and then reused. So, you know, improper, incomplete sterilization uh, could easily transmit small, you know, bloodborne pathogens like hepatitis C. So, you know, testing for for Hep C virus, it's done by first testing the hepatitis C antibody test in the blood, which it'll usually show up two to three months after the virus has entered the body. And you know, if this test is positive, then it's going to be followed up with another blood test. It's called the hepatitis C viral load to determine if the virus is in the bloodstream. Um, other lab tests to note, you know, when uh, testing for a hepatitis C virus in the blood uh, include your liver enzymes, uh, SGPT and SGOT. Now, if SGOT is higher than SGPT, that can indicate that damage to the liver is worsening. Um, other blood tests include ALK, FOS, uh, bilirubin, uh, your total protein. Um, you also want to make sure you get a a, a complete uh, CBC. Um, and you know your doctor they'll they'll explain what these tests mean for you. You know it's important to note that other factors can contribute towards abnormal lab results. You know other things that can um, you know make a contribution to the abnormal lab results include you know alcohol co uh, uh, consumption, medications, drugs or even hemochromatosis. Um, hemochromatosis is uh, high iron, which is detected by high ferritin levels in the blood. And that can also elevate liver tests as well. In fact, it's the most common cause is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which affects up to 30% of the population. Now, you know, conventional 
drug recommendations by physicians usually consists of, you know, combination uh, therapy of two to three types of medications. These medications can be used anywhere from 12 to 48 weeks. Uh, now, you want to make sure your blood tests, they're going to be getting done during drug therapy to make sure that they're working. However, you know, there's many side effects, you know, from these drugs, such as anxiety, fatigue, headaches, um, cause birth defects, high blood pressure. Uh, it can lower thyroid function. Um, you get diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, just to name a few. And, you know, the problem here is that the current stand with the current standard treatment, there's only about a 50% success rate. Now, uh, you know, they're also with, uh, now with nutritional therapy, um, with vitamins, um, there's been a lot of uh, documentation uh, done through research. Um, vitamin D, it's a key factor for the immune system, and it helps reduce inflammatory responses. Newer studies uh, have identified, you know, the patients diagnosed with a chronic hepatitis C virus are deficient in vitamin D. There was, uh, there, there's one documented study that showed um, out of 118 people who were in the study, they uh, died, they were diagnosed with hep C virus, 92% of them were also deficient in vitamin D. Research shows that even patients taking conventional drug therapy uh, of you know, hep C medications benefit from vitamin D because it improves the viral response. You know, it's important to test vitamin D in order to know your status. Um, however, you know, patients benefit, you know, typically from taking around 5,000 IUs a day. Um, another supplement uh, called uh, silymarin or milk thistle is widely used in patients with liver disease and hepatitis C. One documented study showed that patients who weren't responding to conventional drug therapy responded very well to oral uh, silymarin supplementation. Uh, in fact, you know, studies show that after 12 weeks, the viral load test was undetectable in 43% of the patients involved in the study, which, you know, it's pretty remarkable. Other studies, you know, used, uh, or other supplements used in studies with patients with chronic or acute hep C are large doses of vitamin C, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid, um, but you got to remember that every case is different. And, you know, this means that there's no cure-all for hep C virus. But if it's left untreated, side effects can occur. And that's why getting tested is so important. You know, an individualized plan based on exactly what your body needs can be determined by getting a comprehensive blood test. And then any, you know, further test that uh, your experienced healthcare provider sees fit. Like, like, you know, like I mentioned uh, before, every case is different. And by defining other deficiencies and toxicities in the body, we're able to improve the immune system's ability to heal and repair. So, you know, just because you feel healthy doesn't mean that there aren't signs, you know, in your body that is trending towards disease. So, you know, find out today what you can do to be healthier and, uh, you know, be healthier each day forward. Okay, it's good. Uh, good talking to you guys today. Hope, uh, uh, hope you guys learned uh, some valuable information there. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye now.